Hi guys, welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Wolverine issue 13, written by Benjamin Percy with art from Scott Eaton. This is another Hellfire Gala tie-in issue. So, in this issue, we see something that has been a long time coming. Someone finally calls Beast on his bullshit Finally, someone stands up to him. Uh, for a while, Beast has been up to no good and has quite frankly been a bit scary and authoritarian. Uh, running around trying to destabilize and take over the nation of Terraverta, among other things. Come to think of it, I guess that really does make uh, X-Force the, uh, the mutant CIA. Because we're living up to their namesake. <laughs> anyway, uh, here we see his planning and scheming blowing up in his face, and he almost wrecks the Hell Hellfire Gala. Picking up the story from X-Force issue 20 from a couple weeks ago, uh, the party guests from Terra Verde have broken free of their programming and have started to attack the other party guests, and X-Force, with a little bit of help from Deadpool, have to scramble to take care of business before people figure out what's going on, and Beast is implicated in an international scandal. Would not be a good look at the Hellfire gala. There's bigger fireworks going on and we know what those fireworks are. During and after that we finally see a couple characters admonish Beast for what he's been up to and like I said earlier it's been a long time coming but Beast continues to justify his actions and he believes he is in the right which may even be more scarier than his actions on his own. Uh, in addition to all that we of course have some comedy courtesy of Deadpool and then the shipment of Logic Diamonds uh, that was on the Marauder that shipment has uh, gone Arise. So let's go ahead here and talk about all that and we'll jump into the pages and get into all of the good stuff. Alright, so we open up the comic here and a Sage is there in her command center calling out that to uh, her X-Force teammates that they need a battle plan. I love Wolverine's response. He just says, tell me where to go and who to hurt. And of course, Wolver or, uh, Beast is still inside the party and he says, I'm very much hoping that I misheard you. And then Quentin is, of course, very much Quentin. He says, uh, it's about time something interesting happened. Uh, I'm bored by all of the glad handing and boot licking. Sage follows up and says, there's a terrorist cell loose at the gala, and the Terra Verdian ambassadors have gone rogue. That's right, Beast. Your stuff has gone right. Now, uh, throughout all the Hellfire Gala, we've had a lot of cameos and little Easter eggs with people, most notably probably um, George R. R. Martin, Kevin Feige, some sports stars, things like that. I don't know if these two characters are supposed to be someone, or if they just wanted some, like a funny old couple in here just to kind of help facilitate the story. So if you guys know who they are, please let me know uh, down in the comments. But Apparently, the gentleman has had a few glasses of scotch and his wife would like to dance, but he needs to visit the facilities first, and so he runs off into the bathroom where uh, our Terra Verdians have started to go crazy, and he goes to wash his face, and a big old monster grabs him out of the sink and pulls him down in there, and I really love uh, the design here. feels almost brood uh, like. I don't know if that was an intentional choice or not, but I still think, I, I still really, really dig the design. And then Wolverine shows up, and does what Wolverine does. He says, this restroom's closed for service and starts, you know, hacking and slashing there against the uh, against the monster. Good Wolverine stuff. So, uh, we've got Beast here uh, quietly excusing himself from the party while Sage over the radios is saying, I'm presently scanning all geo-trackers associated with the Terra Verdians. Uh, they appear to have gone dark, likely crushed or, or tossed aside. Ambassador Gabriel Gomez last pinged near somewhere near the western edge of the dance floor. Uh, and he says, I've got, uh, B says, I've got eyes on her, I'll intercept. Uh, this goes without saying, but no one can die tonight. Not only that, but we, but no one can know what is happening. It's essential we keep this quiet and keep everyone safe. Yeah, Beast, why is that? Hmm, if they found out, would it maybe cause an international incident and get you guys in a whole lot of trouble? Hmm, how about that, Beast? How about that? So, Beast goes over there and takes down uh, Ambassador uh, Gomez, rips her away from this poor fool that she's about to kill, and then uh, Quentin Choir uh, shows up and kind of takes care of business. He almost uh, does the men in black thing and wipes the guy's memory. He says, uh, don't worry, Beastie, I got this. There were a few synaptic, uh, there we are, a few synaptic snips uh, with a flood of endorphins, and you're good to go. I even tossed in a fake juicy memory of a pants down around your ankles tryst because I'm such a 
nice guy. Well, how about that, Quinn Guire? He really is turning over a new leaf and uh, being nicer, <laughs> being nicer to people. So we go back to Wolverine here fighting, and he says, uh, "Was under the impression Terra Verde uh, was Krakoa, and, and Krakoa made their peace." Uh, the monster says, "I can't tell if you're mocking me or if you actually don't know what you've done to us." Wolverine follows up and says, "I didn't do uh, nothing, uh, but till the garden when I was in when your country was overrun by weeds." The monster says, "That's an interesting way to describe a coup," and, he, and Wolverine's like, "Wait, what the hell are you talking about?" You signed the treaty. And then the other guy says, uh, We had no choice. The telephoronics that run through our veins were compromised. You programmed us to be allies. And then, just a few minutes ago, I don't know how or why, but the programming failed. I suspect someone uh, turned it off intentionally, as I'm sure we'll find out at some point. He follows up and says, After months of being shackled inside my own body, I woke up in control. I might have come here as a political prisoner, but I'm leaving as a revolutionary. There he is go. Alright, so like I said in the intro, the shipment of Logic Diamonds that uh, the Shi'ar brought to the X-Men, uh, that shipment is about to go awry. We have that shipment here on the Marauder where Christian Frost, Emma's brother, uh, is uh, taking it somewhere when someone behind him says, right about now, all hell is breaking loose at the gala, so scream all you want, but no one will hear you, and then uh, they kill. They kill him. They just leave his body floating in there, in the, in the ocean, and take the boat. Then they say they like you won't even recognize you're missing until tomorrow by which time i'll be long gone so that's uh that's not very good going back to uh the party here at sage is saying on the radio uh, I'm sorry, Beast is saying, uh, Domino, this is Beast. You cannot allow the ambassadors to leave. If word gets out uh, of what's happened, we could have a diplomatic conflagration on our hands. Yeah, you don't say, Beast. You don't say. And then that's when Deadpool shows up. And of course, he has an RPG, which apparently he may or may not have stored up his butt. I'll, I'll leave that to your imagination, and thankfully the artist here will also leave it to your imagination. I'm not going to think about it. You can do that on your own time. Domino says, your genius plan is to kill us both, and he's like, why not? You were super mean to me earlier, and I gotta admit, they kind of were a little mean to Deadpool, but it's, it's Deadpool, he can take it. Uh, Domino says, that makes us about as much sense as what Terra Verde is doing here. One minute we're allies, the next we're enemies. What do you all want? And then the monster reaches out with its tentacles, yanks Deadpool off his feet, and he lets the missile go, blowing something up. How the party goers didn't hear that, I'll never know, but it's comic book logic. I'll, I'll be happy uh, to take it. So, uh, Beast takes the ambassador to um, uh, back to the back to the command center where the uh, X Force is working. And this is where we get our first moment in this book where someone just lays it out for Beast and says, no, this is not how it's it's going to go. Uh, Sage says, this was a mistake. We should rectify it and not make it worse. Um, and he was just trying to reboot the telefloronic system. And she says, um, or he uh, accuses her of it being an inside job. And she says, don't be absurd. And he says, it uh, it was, wasn't it? How could you, or how, how else would anyone else access the system or even know about the biocoding? And she says, it's not time for infighting. And he continues to press it and says, don't think I haven't noticed your tiny size and stubborn silences. And then she just straight up slaps the shit out of him. Good. Thank you. Someone do this to be like, I know he's trying to do everything with the best interest uh, and the kind of an ends justify the means, but man, sometimes the ends don't justify the means. Good Lord. She says, uh, I'm going to fix it. Now get the fuck out of my office. Thank you, Sage. Thank you very, very much. So, uh, they kind of wrap up that stuff. That storyline here on this page they basically say the Terra Verindians uh, would lay down their arms if the mutants relinquished control of their country and allowed their uh, them political independence along with the following reparations. One billion U.S. dollars for economic and emotional damages incurred. X-Corp would promise to disregard all pharmaceutical and technological copyrights as it relates to telefloronic technology Terra Verde has under development and their vote uh, on recognizing Krakoan trade deal will pivot from a yes to a no. Sounds like the X-Men got off with a slap on the wrist after everything that uh, they did or Beast did. So we uh, jump to later on in the evening. This is after the terraforming of Mars, so after a planet size X Men number one from last week. And everyone's kind of meeting there at the bar. We got some classic Marvel characters there. And of course, Deadpool walks in and says, Let's get this party. Deep Pool is in the house. 
Honorary Mutant OG X-Force. That's right. He says here, can we do body shots? Let's do body shots. I want to suck... Uh, I want you to suck the lime out of my belly button. Ew. Wait, with our healing factor, do we even have belly buttons? That's a very good question. I assume they do. But hey, you, know, you never know. Uh, I guess it's artist choice, whoever's uh, doing that one. So then, circling back to earlier in the book, Herbert comes out of the bathroom. Finally, I'm sure he was knocked out or something. Uh, and there, and his wife or girlfriend or whoever he was there with says, where have you been? He's like, well, I was in the bathroom, of course. Dude, you were in the bathroom for a couple hours. That's that's something to worry about. Uh, and she says, you're, you're sopping wet. And he says, you asked me to wash up, didn't you? Consider me thoroughly scrubbed. Weird. Okay. She says, well, you've missed everything. The night is all but over. And he says, not yet. Let me have, uh, not until I get my dance. And then they dance on an empty dance floor behind them while our uh, characters here have a nice uh, drink at the end of the evening. From there, we go to a little bit later in the evening, 1.20 a.m., according to the caption. And this is where Emma is calling Beast on his crap as well. Uh, he says, I really don't see the need to explain myself to you and she says and nevertheless you will beast says uh, as voltaire said there is no god but uh, don't tell that to my servant lest he murder me in the night krakoa is more than a nation it is a god Ooh, that's that's interesting he says, how am I being ridiculous? The treaty requires people be servile to us. They are rewarded for their fealty. Yeah, that sounds a little authoritarian there, Beast, huh? A little dictatorial, maybe? Krakoa is a god, and if you want uh, people to believe in you and to fear you as a god, you need to be omniscient. We need to be able to hear all their prayers and blasphemies. We need to spy. And Emma's like, you mind-controlled an entire country. And he says, is it any worse than terraforming a planet? And she says, I'm sure you could intellectually justify just about every horror this world's ever known. Yeah, that's that's the scary bit. He totally believes that he is right, and every single uh, end justifies every single means, and it's it's pretty damn scary, especially the way he views um, Krakoa and what they've set up. Not just that they have a new home uh, and they need to protect it, but they are literally above everyone else. Calm down, beast. Your Magneto is showing. He continues on, uh, Our goal is uh, is long-term survival. Remember, you and your quiet council can sit in your sunlit circle and debate amongst yourselves the correct committee at decision. But from Charles's view, uh, the view from the very beginning, the hardest decisions will be made in the shadows. Oh, hard, hard stuff. He says, uh, I'll be that bastard then. Um, yeah, I'll take the blame. I'll earn the hate if that's what it takes to save us from annihilation. Damn, beast damn and so that's when uh, emma gets the call that the marauder has been uh lost at sea or at least it's not where it needs to be it's 200 yards off the coast of madripoor and it's on fire not good because they there was some stuff they needed on that boat so pretty solid issue not my favorite of the hellfire gala stuff but it had some fun moments and we got to see beast get some of his comeuppance that has been coming for a while so guys what did you think about this one let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below like you guys always do thank you so much for watching if it's your first time here at the channel or a return trip please make sure you're subscribed if you enjoyed this video and you want more content like this once again thank you so much for watching watching and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop